back in Australia. Okay, so, uh, hello YouTubers. Um, pull me bike here. I'm doing a bike review, first bike review of 2015, and today I'm riding the Suzuki. Um, Suzuki, is that how you say it? Um, SV650 SU. The SV650 S is uh, non restricted. The SV, uh, SV650 SU is the Lambs version uh, for the Australian market. So just to go on about a little bit about this bike, it looks, um, <laughs> look, have a look at some pictures online. This one's a little bit smashed up. It's, it's gone through some paces, this. The guy who owns it takes it out all the time. He absolutely uh, loves it. He rides it a lot. So um, it's, it's got some battle scars, but the thing still runs great. Um, the SV650 SU is restricted for the Lambs market and the Lambs riders. Um, you can, with a little bit of technical know-how, change the ECU very cheaply and uh, get it de-restricted. Obviously, that voice insurance, Lambs riders not be not meant to be on it. So blah blah blah. Take all that into consideration before you go ahead and do it. Um, this is a V-twin. Uh, the first SV650s came out in uh, 1999, I think it was. Um, it's practically gone mostly unchanged for the best part since then. So this is a, a veteran model of Suzuki. It's been in long standing, obviously a success. We're going to talk about why it's a success. Um, it comes with a V-twin engine. Uh, and uh, an aluminium chassis. It's got telescopic forks. It's got twin front, uh, twin discs on the front. Um, this one hasn't got the standard exhaust. So okay, fair enough. Um, I think it, he said it was 17 or 16 litre tank. Get that information on, on Google. I don't know. I've literally got this bike for half an hour or so. So anyway. Let's have a look. So this is uh, obviously a sporty bike. Um, it's it's fuel injected, and uh, that was one of the changes. So in 2003, Suzuki updated the 1999 Naked model to be more sporty. They changed the chassis to be uh, more up to date. They added fuel injection, and so. Uh, it was updated because the American market absolutely loved the bike and they wanted it to be more sporty. Suzuki uh, changed that for them. In 2007, um, they updated it a little bit more uh, with the looks and, the, um, and added the restricted version for the Australian Lambs scheme. Lambs is learner. Um, approved motorcycle scheme uh, and so it became lambs there's a lambs option um, in Australia and yeah that that was released in uh, 2008 so obviously I'm not sure if this one's been de-restricted oh, 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 oh. um, so anyway less about that more about on the bike um, V-twin looks let's have a look at the look so I mean what does this bike have it's got telescopic forks this one hasn't got ABS you can get an ABS option it's got a V-twin engine half the fairings missing uh, the frames aluminium it's about as light as a CB 400 but the the engine size difference is quite a lot it's a 650 um, let's take it for a ride and see how we feel so at first I'm just gonna roll around this empty park here first impression is that for a V-twin 
for a V-twin this is surprisingly smooth and it puts out power all the way through the range so the engine I think is great now the, one of the good things about these bikes is the price you can get a really good example of this bike um, extremely cheap uh, if second hand and these things are known for lasting the test of time this one's been dropped a few times rides absolutely fine and uh, the V-Twins engine the, the engines are the gem I think um, it's uh, it pulls when you want it to pull it's not great at slow speeds but at higher speeds this thing would just cruise you around at not a lot of effort so V-Twin very smooth very likeable um, lots of fun and in the scheme of V-Twins this one's quite forgiving I mean they're a little bit funny at slow speed some of them but this one's actually okay I find it okay um, throttle response isn't too bad uh, this is it's delivering I have some expectations on how a bike should ride and so far this is delivering I haven't taken it out of the park yet but for a first feel it's okay turning angle this handles quite well this it feels like quite a long bike quite a big bike a bit butty um, uh, um, first impressions when stacking up next to my CB400 CB400 is incredibly small but um, this handles really well I've only been on it for five ten minutes and uh, confidence in, in the handling is starting to get there so um, you know chucking some u-turns and it feels good so actually really surprised with the handling um, I think this bike for me when looking at it I mean you know it, it's got half a fairing looks kind of unfinished to me you can get a full fairing kit and I think that rounds it off really nicely um, and I absolutely love the uh, the one with the full fairing but um, the, the way that the V-twin drops is the way it hangs out of the frame is very much like a monster and I think Suzuki were trying to do that the engine bay looks like a Ducati monster which was very popular at the time and the top half looks like a, a TL a TL series Suzuki TL 1000 the guy who owns this says it's great on petrol great on handling um, riding position wears you down on long rides it's very aggressive this when you sit on this thing this is saying to me I'm a sports bike I am hunched right over the petrol tank um, and when you move your your bum right to the back of the seat where it's meant to be I, I'm you know I'm basically clamping onto the tank with my knees so that my wrists are not absorbing every single ounce of uh, uh, pressure on the road so that's what you would expect from a sports bike so I'm not even gonna throw that in as a complaint you know they haven't gone halfway with the sports riding position though it is full on but so far I'm ready to take this on the road because this feels so great um, he did say for a learner ride even though it's a learner bike insurance is pricey so don't expect any favors from your insurance um, other than that though let's take it for a ride and talk more about this bike and how I feel about it but so far great ride really good really forgiving although I'm a little bit experienced so so the dash is nice and clear um, obvious uh, the speedo is digital and the revs are analog mirrors are nice 
handy um, and yeah really easy to get on with um, the riding position is is the uh, the elephant in the room here this is an everyday bike I, I feel it's not cutting-edge technology but all these parts just work really well together um, the handling is great I mean you're nice and low on the bike um, Sorry, I'm going down roads I don't know too well, so I'm trying to focus on where I'm going and try and talk about the bike. I mean, this bike to me is a, a classic cheese toasty, okay? So you get, nothing is cutting edge technology, nothing's gourmet about this bike. But when you put just a bit of cheddar cheese onto just a bit of toasted bread, you've got magic. Um, it just, it works, you just, it's very Moorish, you want more, you want more cheese toasties and you know there's nothing super special or gourmet about it, you just want more, it just works and it tastes good and uh, I think that is the winning combination of this bike, that and the price, I mean you can get these bikes at a really decent price, we know they last long because they've been in service for a while now and you can still buy some of the uh, very first models that ever came out and um, so you're only, the only thing you're going to have to think about when you buy this bike is how the, the seating position, how do you want to sit on, on a bike? Because this is sporty and it's, you know, it's relentlessly sporty. This isn't your run of the mill half half. So is there anything I don't like about this bike? No, uh, there's nothing I don't like about this bike. Even the sporty position, if I was going to go out and buy a sports bike, I'm not going to really complain about the sporty seating position. Um, that's what I've gone out and bought, a sports bike. So uh, that's the only thing you really need to consider about here. I mean, the forks, the brakes are good enough, the suspension is good enough, the V-twin is the gem I think in this. It's got some character, it's got some pull, and it's it's actually really smooth for a V-twin. Um, handling's good, it looks like a big bike, um, but when you sit on it, it's surprisingly friendly. It looks awkward when you're just looking at it. Um, but again, uh, you know, in 10 minutes, I was doing quite comfortable U-turns. Um, I mean, hitting around a corner doesn't seem too much of a bother either. Uh, for the price, you've really got to look into getting this bike. Um, this is, uh, to me, an instant classic. Uh, it's Japanese, it's tough. This one's been dropped a few times and there's nothing wrong with the ride at all. Uh, just a few few bits and bobs on the fairing that it suffered. Electrics are okay. It's pretty good on petrol. Handling's still responsive. Um, a bike like this, I think, doesn't need too much looking after. It's it's served its time on the roads, and it's a survivor. It's not one of those ones that you're not that's going to be unreliable. Um, the only thing that you need to look out for if you're a proper learner rider is the insurance. Uh, I don't think they're very friendly on insurance with a 650. Um, but great bike, um, would totally recommend it and if I'd ridden one I would have considered buying one myself. This bike is known for being incredibly easy to handle and was um, uh, when, when riders discovered this bike they started racing them in the lightweight twin class races sounds good I love the sound of that V-twin 
they are so much better sounding than a parallel twin, if you ask me. Um, which is just another reason for buying this. Let's get off the bike and have a look at see what kind of storage options we've got here. <laughs> Great fun, absolutely love it. Right, so we've got a pill and seat. There's about one and a, there's about one and a half hands worth of uh, pill and seat here. So as far as storage goes, you're not going to be getting much in there really. So my synopsis is, this bike is a cheese toasty. Uh, nothing on it is cutting edge, but together all the parts just work extremely well. It's, it's, it's a, a very well designed bike. It comes in at a very good price. Um, it, I would imagine, be very easy to look after. The V-Twin is an absolute joy to ride. Uh, sounds great as well and incredibly, surprisingly smooth. Um, it's lighter than the CB400 by, you know, three pounds or so. Um, handles absolutely great. You could use it on the track. I've been told the rear wheel and the forks are compatible with those found on an older model GSX-R. So you can get on some upside down forks and a great big fat rear wheel. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cheese toasty. It's, nothing's high tech, but you put all these bits together and you just want more. It's an instant, instant classic and you'll never forget about it. You'll never forget about how easy it was to get on with. Um, great bike. Only thing I would do if I had one myself was add the, uh, the rest of the fairing, which can be bought separately. There's also a belly pan instead of a full fairing if you like that engine to hang out like that. In all honesty, it doesn't look too bad, but on first impressions, it looks like a bike that's been crashed and the rear fairings removed. Uh, the, sorry, the bottom fairings removed. Um, so that's what it looks like to me on first impressions. And so really just to clean up the lines of the bike, um, I, I would add those bottom fairings. Other than that, your main issue is gonna be insurance if you're a proper learner rider. But as far as the bike's concerned, you couldn't really blame this bike for a lot of faults. It's more likely to be down to the rider. Um, good bike and as I said if you really want the this kind of bike has is, is used in a lightweight uh, twin series racing so um, I guess that says a lot about what this bike can do